Hello and welcome to today's webinar on single dock terminal units and low hot water temperatures. So a little bit about me. My name is Brandon Helms, like Lily just said. I'm the equipment product manager at Kruger. So my role involves managing terminal units, underfloor air distribution, fan coils, and blower coil units at Kruger. So getting into it, let's talk a little bit about hot water systems in general and add a little history to it. Boilers um, are typically is what is used to generate the heat to create hot water for buildings. Uh, this hot water is stored in a tank and then is pumped to various equipment throughout the building, equipment such as terminal units with hot water reheat coils. Historically, non-condensing boilers were used to do this and were designed to supply 180 degree water and expected 160 degree water to come back to the boiler, meaning that 20 degrees of the water was used for heating at the terminal units and other equipment. This 180 degree water temperature uh, was, was well enough heat to reheat air passing through the terminal unit water cools, considering the supplier temperature through a single duct terminal unit, for instance, is usually around 55 degrees. So that 125 degree difference between the water and the air allowed heat transfer to happen rapidly at the water cool. Changes in the industry have been happening for the better. There have been improvements with thermal resistance on glazing and curtain walls, which has reduced the amount of heating needed in perimeter zones. ASHRAE 90.1, which is the energy, energy standard for buildings except low rise residential buildings, has several design considerations when using boilers, including minimum boiler efficiency and setting limits on return water temperature going back to the boiler. These and other changes have led to the wider use of condensing boilers instead of the traditional non-condensing boiler. If you aren't familiar with these two terms, the main difference between a condensing and a non-condensing boiler is that condensing boilers reuse exhaust air to preheat the water before going through the main heat exchanger on the boiler. Reusing this exhaust helps make condensing boilers greater than 90% efficient, whereas non-condensing uh, non -condensing boilers would simply exhaust the air, waste the heat that went along with it, and conduct all the heat transfer at the main heat exchanger, which results in about a 60 to 80% efficiency. Condensing boilers are also built to supply lower water temperatures. Um, by this, I mean I've seen supply water temperature coming from a boiler between 100 to 140 degrees compared to the 180 degrees. Uh, and this change helps improve the efficiency of the condensing boiler. So as previously said, 180 degree entering water temperature is very easy to work with to supply necessary heating capacity on terminal units. However, lowering the entering water temperature drastically changes the heating performance of the hot water coils. This becomes a particular issue when working with hot water coils on single duct terminal units. When comparing a schedule that was calculated at 180 degrees, going to 140 degrees will reduce the heating capacity by 15% when using the same water flow rate. Going a step further to 120 degrees in water temperature reduces the heating capacity by 50%. So this is a significant difference. Um, I've seen countless performance schedules where the entering water temperature was more of an afterthought. Uh, the engineer creates a schedule using 180 degree entering water temperature, and then later on goes in and just changes it to 140 degrees entering water temperature and expects to use the same equipment. Um, trying to do that becomes challenging and almost impossible. A one row hot water cool, for instance, becomes almost unusable on perimeter zones. It simply doesn't have enough surface area on the coil to transfer enough heat that's needed on perimeter zones. The really only 
option you have is to increase water flow through the coil to provide more heat transfer to the air. However, this can only do so much and typically pumps have already been sized and selected using the GPMs that are on the schedule. So all of this is to show how important it is that the schedule gets changed to show performance calculations with the appropriate entering water temperature. It simply can't be just changed like an afterthought. So what are your options to maintaining heating capacity with lower entering water temperature? So the first thing we can do is look at increasing number of coil rows on the water coil. This keeps water flow and water pressure drop low. Um, however, adding additional rows does add static pressure to the system because we're adding more obstructions to the airstream. This added static pressure uh, will be seen at the air handler and can increase the operating costs at the air handler. Uh, multiply this added static pressure across several terminal units. You know, you could see a requirement for larger fans and bigger motors on air handler units to, to compensate for this added static pressure. This also will increase the first costs for the coil. As every, everyone knows, copper is a fairly expensive material and we just added a whole nother row of copper to the coil. There are also other material costs uh, because the coil casing has to physically grow in length to accommodate the, the room needed for the extra row. This increases the amount of galvanized steel and aluminum that's being used. Another option is to increase fins per inch on the coil. So just to give a little bit more detail, water coils are comprised of copper tubing and aluminum fins that are mechanically bonded to the copper tubing. It would be easy to believe that the copper tubing is doing all the work, but reality is that aluminum fins are responsible for 65 to 70% of the heat transfer on any water coil. A way we can tap into this more is by adding more aluminum fins. The amount of fins is specified by fins per inch. It's as simple as it sounds. If you look at one square inch on a coil face, count the number of fins in that square inch, that'll tell you the fins per inch of the coil. Historically, 10 fins per inch has been the standard choice. However, 12 fins per inch is an option and is becoming more popular. Changing to 12 fins per inch on a coil can increase the heat transfer up to 10%. However, this comes with added pressure drop over the coil. Again, we've added more fins to the airstream, which adds resistance to the air. Uh, this change can result in 15 to 20% increase in air pressure drop over the coil. So that's gonna be, again, seen at the air handler. Another option to look at is oversizing the single duct. Um, basically what this means is say you have a schedule that you would normally use an eight inch inlet single duct on uh, based off of the airflow and the feet per minute through the duct. Now, to oversize it, you'd use a, a single duct with a 10 inch inlet or maybe a nine inch inlet instead. Uh, so this would increase the size of the coil on the single duct, which would provide more heat transfer the larger coil also lowers air pressure drop over the coil as well. Uh, sounds like a win situation. However, there are drawbacks to consider. Moving to the larger inlet has consequences. The first is that you're now using a larger airflow sensor that is manufactured for a specific airflow range and specific velocity pressure range. Uh, moving to the larger inlet size could result in the scheduled airflows to fall outside of the operating range of that airflow sensor and the controls on the unit that are reading the airflow sensor. This is a particular issue if you're scheduling low minimum uh, airflow values on the schedule. Uh, another drawback is that the oversized damper is working in a limited range to control airflow through the inlet. So for instance, an eight inch inlet might have to modulate between zero degrees to 90 degrees rotation to throttle airflow over the specified CFM range. 
Whereas use it with the same inlet pressure, a 10 inch inlet would only be operating at half of that. So it's full open position might be at 45 degrees instead of 90 degrees. Again, this is a issue at lower flows. So where the, the step of the damper is going to vary the CFM dramatically. Um, so for instance, a, a five degree movement on eight inch inlet might result in a 10 CFM difference. Whereas a 10 inch inlet, that same movement could be a 50 CFM change. Uh, if your minimum airflow is at 200 CFM, you know, this could become an issue that the 10 inch inlet will oscillate around 200, C, 200 CFM rather than giving a steady airflow control, which is important. Another option is to look at a different product entirely. So specifically the Kruger model LMHS LC. The LMHS, which is the Kruger standard single duct is shown in the top right of the screen. And below that is a picture of the LMHS LC with the same inlet size. Really the only difference between these two is that the casing and the water coil are much larger on the LMHS LC. So in the middle of the screen, you can really see this. Uh, in the front, we have an LMHS water coil. And then in the back of that, behind that, is the water coil that would be used on an LMHS LC product. So the LMHS LC allows you to use, still use the proper inlet size to maintain airflow and have good damper control while also getting the benefits of an oversized coil, which will increase heating capacity and lower air pressure drop. This product really is the same as oversizing a single duct, but without the drawbacks that we just discussed. Really the best solution when using 140 or 120 degree in water temperature is actually a combination of the LMHS LC and a 12 inch French coil. The LMHS LC by itself isn't always enough to overcome the 15 to 50% heating performance difference when using lower water temperature. And the 12 inch French coil on a standard LMHS does add another boost in capacity. However, it does increase air pressure drop over the coil, which isn't ideal. With the increased so coil size of the LMHS LC, we're able to minimize the air pressure drop of the 12 fins per inch coil. Um, really, when you look at LMHS LC, 10 fins per inch, 12 fins per inch, the air pressure drop increase going to that change is very minimal. The larger coil and the 12 fins per inch significantly increases the heat transfer while keeping the water flow and the water pressure drop relatively low and close to the same that's typically seen on schedules. Uh, another great thing is that this isn't a special terminal unit. It's not a custom coil. Um, we're really just taking two products that we already have and marrying them together to create one solution. To sum it all up, lower hot water temperature is becoming more common to save money at the boiler. Engineers really need to take this into account when creating performance schedules because it does make a significant difference. There are several options to maintain heat capacity with lower water temperature. One is to increase the number of coal rows. Another is to use 12 fins per inch instead of 10 fins per inch. Think about switching to the LMHS LC to get the benefits of a larger coil. But really, the best solution is a combination of the LMHS LC and 12 fins per inch. So, if you like what you heard today and want more information, please contact us through a local Kruger representative in your area, or you can contact us directly to our application engineering team via email or by phone. Uh, you can just call our main line, hit extension three to get to that particular group. Another option is to visit our website at www.kruger-hvac.com. We have a lot of great information on there. Uh, one bit of information that's very helpful is our quick reference product catalog. So typically a product catalog is 30 pages long or more. 
Um, so what we did is we took that 30 page, 30 pages worth of information, condense it down to two pages and really make it easy to look at two pages worth of documentation and make it to where you can make a quick selection and have a good understanding of the product with just those two pages. Uh, you can find a link to this quick reference catalog on most of the product pages on our website. Uh, if you'd like to have the whole collection of quick reference catalogs, you can download that file on our main page. Uh, just look for quick reference catalog and click the full file download. And in that same area on the home page, you can request a physical copy if you like to keep a, a copy of it on your desk and so I could go through it manually instead of digitally. Uh, that is possible, just click that button. And that sums up the webinar uh, presentation that I have today. I'd like to open it up for questions.